Hi guys, this is for the uh, for the popcorn junkies, box set binges side of the channel. Um, just thought I'd uh, check in because I've just watched the first episode of The Mandalorian. Um, this is Disney Plus's brand new offering and I have been extraordinarily excited about watching this. Um, in fact, for six months now, I've been sat on bended knee and sat on my hands and fretting and my legs have been shaking and I've been dribbling an awful lot and I've been waiting to see the the source material for Baby Yoda and for Pedro Pascal's uh, much lauded um, uh, The Mandalorian, another bounty hunter along the lines of Boba Fett. Now I realise this is the kind of content that is very specifically for um, you know, the franchise fans and Star Wars fans and what have you. But I have been stupidly excited about this. Anyway, I thought I'd do a very brief uh, response to each of the episodes. And episode one, I've just watched lying on my back on the floor in this room. I've watched it in three or four different uh, sections. Um, I've been eking those moments out to watch it. Uh, some really nice elements to it are Werner Herzog, really liked him. He was brilliant. Some really messed up, mucky looking stormtroopers that seem to be Werner Herzog's uh, sort of henchmen, uh, you know, in this sort of seedy netherworld of kind of bounty hunting and what have you. It's clearly riffing on the whole American Western thing, um, which is kind of nice. And I was kind of up for, I think I was a little bit shocked by how obviously that's done and that sounds odd because of course for something to riff on a genre you need to know it's riffing on a genre but I didn't feel it kind of subverted the genre or changed the genre it just kind of replaced key obvious elements of that genre for instance with things like the Mandalorian in this episode trying to mount the back of a beast that looked like a piranha on four legs and then we had some shots of him and this kind of guy that he'd kind of, or creature that he'd met en route that was the owner of these beasts, sort of like galloping, but galloping on these strange piranha with legs. They looked bibbly bobbly. They were sort of doing it like that. So it didn't, it lacked the sort of the drama or the class of, of the Western. The scenery was good. The set design was good. Um, uh, you know, it had all that sort of ubiquitous kind of Tatooine planet type stuff. Um, lots of, you know, I'm a big fan of all the set design and all of the kind of tubes and all of the kind of, you know, the strange things coming out of buildings that could be, what are they, sort of air con type, type things. Um, it had, what do we think of Pedro Pascal? Um, he was, he was good, but, but I have to say, Again, I felt like they were, it felt like someone at some point, Dave, was it Dave Filoni who's directed it? I felt like Dave Filoni, the director, had sort of said to Pedro Pascal, do the voice like uh, Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. Go ahead, guys, make my day. So it felt, again, very on the nose. It felt very on the nose and a, a little too... Obvious. Now, I've heard on the grapevine that the first episode isn't necessarily the greatest one uh, to get excited about. And with all series, one has to sort of bed in and get used to the kind of milieu and all that kind of stuff. I was being delivered that kind of battered realism. I was getting all that sort of, uh, you know, the cantina kind of stuff. Lots of people with strange heads and, you know, a sort of lawlessness. And they've clearly ratcheted up the lawlessness away from the sort of slightly cartoon safety, if you like, of the Star Wars films where... Yeah, people got killed and shit happened and arms got chopped off and all that kind of stuff. I mean, let's face it, Greedo got killed. And yet it seemed a bit darker and a bit more menacing. And as I say, there were these stormtroopers surrounding Werner Herzog that looked like they'd got, they'd been on the wrong end of a crack pipe. Um, and that was kind of good. I, th I think the idea of maybe a stormtrooper zombie type thing would be kind of cool. Um, and anyway, so, you know, the Mandalorian, he's obviously on these, on the, on, he's got been given a bounty, uh, and, uh, and, and he's off to sort of go and capture someone. He doesn't necessarily know who he's capturing again. A great Western trope. Do you remember the wanted posters? 10,000 reward, and then they'd go off, hook them in, lasso them onto the back of the horse and pull them into town. We've got all that stuff going on. 
there was a moment where the Mandalorian went off to me, and you have to forgive me, I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm not a Star Wars aficionado of all the characters. But there was a scene where Pedro Pascal went off with his sort of nugget of sort of money, I guess, uh, which was then smelted down into a shoulder plate. And it felt like he was sitting opposite, I don't know, um, Captain Phasma's cousin from, you know, one of the other films. Very sort of posh, preppy, sort of preppy head girl type voice behind it um the androids were good in this the back of shot stuff was good i did spot a few like there was a moment where he was creeping up the top of a hill or a sort of rocky outcrop to look down onto a vista and i could see the edge of the green screen so i know this has been lauded for its kind of you know, looking like a feature film and having had the same amount of money spent on each episode as a movie would, would have had. But I was feeling the edges of the special effects and what have you. And I was a bit disappointed, if I'm brutally honest, that we didn't see Pedro Pascal's face in the entire first episode. That's not to say I don't believe he was in the suit and that he was wandering around. But here's the thing, guys. Um, I've made some documentaries and films and I've filmed with a lot of people who do incredibly detailed, finely detailed, meticulously made cosplay. And at times in this, I felt a little bit like I was watching a fan movie, uh, which is sounds like a huge discredit and disservice to it, but it didn't feel like it had the pacing quite right yet. It felt quite tentative. I know that there's a lot of hesitancy within the Lucasfilm area at the moment because of the lack of success with Solo and um, with uh, all the backlash around The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker didn't really do too well comparatively to other Star Wars films. And I just felt, and I know this was being made at the same time and earlier, but there was a sort of hesitancy, like a nervousness had crept in. Anyway, I, I could have done with seeing Pedro Pascal. My favourite part of the whole thing, I have to say, I think was Werner Herzog giving it his amazing lines about, I mean, he made a documentary. He's also a director, the actor, uh, and he made a documentary years ago about penguins in the South Pole and how they wander off to the centre of the Antarctic tundra to consider the meaning of their life i mean he is incredibly great bounty hunting is a very old profession i mean all that sort of stuff i'm right up for and i feel they could have had a bit more Werner herzog in there um the fight scenes are okay there was one fight scene with a, with a droid where just before they got to let's face it the baby yoda moment and how did i feel about the baby yoda moment it has to be said baby yoda is fantastically sweet, uh, absolutely beautiful. Um, something that I've got to have on these shelves ASAP. Um, but he was sort of held in a crib. Um, and I don't know, there was something about the whole shootout that again was very westerny uh, and all that sort of stuff. But it just felt a bit obvious. It felt like someone said, let's make a western and let's make an obvious western. And I suppose, I don't know, I don't know whether they could have done something with the grade. It was beautifully, I mean, it was beautifully shot. It was pristine and the colours are a very dark colour, whereas sometimes with Star Wars, they're more primary, the movies, they're more primary colours. But I just wondered whether it just needed a bit of grain in it or a bit of something granular. And I was watching it thinking, what would, would I be pleased watching this with Maddie and Kiki, who they love my love of Star Wars, my daughters, but you know, they're not as big a Star Wars fan as, as I've always been when I was younger. And they believe in the original three films. And I was thinking, would they have got that hit from this? And I don't know. I, I For me, I have to be honest, I was, I was a bit disappointed. But the jury is out. I'm obviously going to uh, feed, back, feed back to you after episode two. But I have to say, episode one, for all of the build-up, maybe it was the build-up, maybe it was the fact that we've had to wait that much longer in the UK. Maybe it's the fact that... I don't know, you know, maybe it's the fact that he doesn't take his, his visor off. Maybe I wanted to see a bit more of who he was. The lines and the dialogue just felt a bit stilted and a bit obvious. There was one moment where he's like looking through a thing and he says, oh, droids. You know, it was a bit leaden. I, th I was expecting it to be a bit more sort of sophisticated or even a bit more self-knowing. It wasn't I mean, the thing is, it's not meant to be a camp series, this one. It's meant to be a bit darker and a bit grittier. But even in darkness and grittiness, you can have a bit of camp. 
because Star Wars is camp and it, and it sort of failed in that. In a weird way, I thought Westworld, the first series that I really liked, did a better job of sort of AI-fying and kind of making complex and layered and menacing the Western genre. I thought that was a clever subversion of the Western genre, whereas I thought this was a pretty damn obvious repositioning of Star Wars stuff in a Western environment. Um, but, you know, I mean, you know, the uh, the the 1977 seven year old in me can't get enough of those droids bleeping around and walking around. I do think they needed to do they go. They needed to go back to the drawing board when it came to the kind of stand in for the horses, because when they jumped on a piranha with legs and it bobbled off into the distance, I mean, I was laughing. It didn't give me that sort of great big moment feeling they're wandering off into the sunset. So anyway, so based on episode one, not great. Not terrible, but not great. Fingers crossed for episode two.